Let's say you have a big new piece of property, but you can only choose one machine. Which one do you choose? Well, I can't make that decision for you, but I can go through some of the pros and cons. I know a lot of you guys have made this same tough decision, but leave your comments down below as we walk through these five machines. I'll give you my take on it all, and if I had to sell all these off and keep just one, I'll let you know what it is at the end. Hey, when you're done watching, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit subscribe to see more tractor and maybe property development videos too. And if you want something for your tractor or your skid steer, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Hang on, look at all those deer. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, there's five of them though. That's a doe. Yeah, those are doe little guys. All right, we'll give you the quick rundown of what equipment we have here. First, we're gonna start with a subcompact tractor. We're gonna have a John Deere 1025R loader, has a backhoe, has a belly mower on it. Next to it right here, we're gonna have a John Deere 333G skid steer. But just think of this as a skid steer in general. They make them big, they make them small, they make them with tracks and with wheels, all sorts of stuff. But a skid steer represented right here. Next up, we're gonna have a very large compact tractor. This is as big of a compact tractor as you can get, a hydrostatic machine. You can get a backhoe for it, you can get the front end loader for it, a cab, an open station, 66 horsepower. So representative, kind of the flip-flop side of the 1025R, which is the smallest subcompact tractor you can get with the biggest compact right here. Next up, we have this bad boy. I just got this one in, a Kubota M4D-071. Yeah, that's a mouthful. But this is gonna be into the utility frame size or classification of tractors. The next step up from the compact, so we have subcompact, skid steer, compact, utility, all right? So this is a whole other gamut. We'll get into that soon. And last but not least, we're gonna have the CAT 305E2. This is a mini excavator. So far, I haven't used this one a whole lot, but I've got a lot of projects for it. There's gonna be some pros and cons associated with each one of these pieces of equipment. So let's get into it now. All right, let's get started, but I wanna put this out there. I know there will be comments. The right machine could depend on your property, right? The size of your property. If you have fields, ponds, woods, whatever you have going on, your budget, a lot of variables come into play. So I'm giving you this information from my perspective based on my property, about 140 acres, a mixture, a field, a lot of woods, a lot of pond frontage, a lot of hills. So this is a tailor-made decision for my property. All right, well, I've said this a lot of times about a 1025R. It's small, but it's mighty, you know? 140 acres is a pretty big chunk of land for a small tractor like this, but it can technically do a lot of the work that needs to be done out here. It's just gonna take it a lot longer. You know, a really good example would be we were putting in an 1800 foot long driveway and I had been using a bigger, a seven foot tiller on my 4720 for a while, but then that broke down for a bit of time and needed to keep the work going. So we hooked up a four foot tiller on the 1025R. It just takes a while longer. You know, it's a smaller footprint. You have to go slower. It doesn't want to till as deep, but the point being, you can still get the job done if time allows. The same thing could be said for mowing a big old field, tilling a food plot, putting some trails in through the woods. There's a lot of things that you can actually do with this tractor, but there's a lot of big projects out there that I have no desire to tackle with a tractor this size. Another big benefit that I've found with a smaller tractor is when I'm in the woods, which again is a huge portion of this property, trying to maintain those trails or just navigate them. Or if you're trying to turn around in tight quarters, a smaller machine is just obviously easier to use. And where we're standing right now, I hope someday will be the yard of our future home. And with a tractor this size, you can put a mid-mount mower or a belly mower on it and maintain your lawn. So if you're looking for an all-in-one machine that can do it all, maybe you do have a little bit smaller chunk of land, then this could garner some serious consideration. But tractors in general are known as Swiss Army knives, right? They can just do a little bit of everything. You know, with the front end loader, you can put a bucket, a snow pusher, a grapple, a set of pallet forks. You can get a backhoe on the backside, of course, the belly mower underneath. They can just tackle all sorts of different projects that may come up which really enhances their value. And I think it's important to note that this is really just a, the miracle of hydraulics, so to speak. So everything from the hydraulic transmissions to just have a twin touch pedal system to go forwards and backwards without changing gears is amazing. You know, with the hydraulics that can lift a thousand or more pounds, you know, and just dig holes and do everything that these machines do is just incredible in and of itself, as well as their ability to enhance your life. All right, moving on to his skid steer. I tell you, I have spent a lot of hours over the last few months in my skid steer. We bought the property at the end of June. It's now November. 
a lot of heavy lifting was required. This was a completely overgrown property, wild for years and years and years. And so it took a lot of effort to get it to this point where we're at right now and still needs a lot more work to get where we want to go. So I have upgraded. This is the largest of the John Deere skid steers that are out there or CTLs, compact track loaders that you might hear it called. But this is kind of the top of the heap and you could get a smaller skid steer and still be well ahead of some other capabilities on other pieces of equipment. The hydraulic systems on skid steers are top notch. And if you get a high flow system, it's gonna allow you to get into something like a mulcher head, which I used out here for hours and hours and hours on end to create trails. These fields were just riddled with autumn olive and other overgrown bushes. And I just spent days clearing everything out, cleaning it up. We still have more work to do on the other side of the property too. But if I were to sum up a skid steer in one word, it would be power. And it's just, the ability to do whatever you want. If you have to move logs, if you wanna use that mulcher head, if you need to lift heavy things with a set of pallet forks, you can count on a skid steer to get it done. Now, second, right behind the power aspect for me on a hilly property is gonna be the stability, that just sense of safety that you feel in a skid steer. It has a low center of gravity. These are nice wide tracks. I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's just an incredible feeling compared to a tractor, and I'm not picking on the 1025, it's just tractors in general, they're pretty long and they're skinny, and they have a little bit higher center of gravity, so you're really going to notice an uneasy, tippy feeling. You know, we've talked about Bora for a long, long time and, and adding wheel spacers to widen your footprint, and the reason for that is because it is just an unsettling feeling. They had this roll bar up top here to prevent rollovers from occurring because it killed so many people years ago. Now, of course, the skid steer is still going to have a roll cage on it. I mean, that's just a safety thing you're going to see on any piece of equipment these days, but I tell you, I have never felt uneasy or tippy at all in my skid steer. I guess I'm just not pushing it hard enough. So as far as attachments go, everything is gonna go on the front end loader. So no matter what you're hooking up, you can put a tiller on a skid steer if you want to, but it's going right up here in front. Same thing with that brush mulcher, same thing with a set of paddle forks, whatever you wanna do. Whereas a tiller is gonna go on the backside on the three point hitch on a tractor. But what I really like about that is the visibility. I mean, you can see this whole glass door, everything is right there in front of you. It's super easy to see. On a tractor, you've got the the hood, the cowling, the engine compartment all in the way so it can be difficult to see what's in front of you. Of course, if you have something on the three-point hitch, you can turn around and see behind you, but that does get uncomfortable after a while. Now, as far as the price of these attachments go, a lot of these are gonna be hydraulically driven. Some are gonna have hydraulic motors on there. There's no like PTO shaft, so there's no gearbox like what a tractor could have on a three-point hitch on the backside. So the attachments can get really costly along with the fact that these larger hydraulic systems have more capacity, so they need to be built beefier, stouter, more steel, which just means more cost. And now besides the attachments, skid steers themselves can cost a pretty penny, you know? So you don't have to get the biggest and the baddest one out there. You can get something smaller. You can get an open station. Out here, oh boy, I tell you, I would not get a wheeled skid steer, at least for this property. It was like just spinning your wheels, uh, literally. I mean, there's still ruts that, that I've seen around here that we had when we were first out here. These tracks are amazing out here on the property and I can't imagine having a wheeled steer. Now, before we get started on the 4720, I think it is worth noting that all of these machines have a factory cab on them with air conditioning and heat, with the exception of the 1025R, which they don't offer. Now you can get a cab with heat on the 1025R and take the doors off in the summertime and have a little fresh breeze coming through, that's fine. But if you have a cab on your tractor or your skid steer or whatever the heck it is in summer, winter, you know, if it's dusty out, if it's rainy, if it's snowy, if it's hot, if it's cold, whatever it is, you're gonna get a lot more work done a lot more efficiently, a lot more comfortably. You're gonna stay out there longer. Your projects will get done quicker. You see where I'm going with this. Okay, now on to the 4720 or the 4066, like what I had uh, previously to this machine, but this is a large frame compact tractor, as big as you can get. Why that's significant to me is that this is still gonna be a hydrostatic machine, all right? So you have a ton of lift capacity on the front end loader and on the three-point hitch to really tackle large attachments and projects that you need to do, but you can still do it efficiently with a hydrostatic transmission, which going forward and backwards is a piece of cake compared to a gear drive, which we'll get into that soon on this machine. But there's really a whole list of pros and cons between hydro and gear drive in general. That's not really what this is about, but really a hydro transmission is hard to beat if you are gonna be changing direction a lot. Say you're going into a, a pile of material or you're grappling a lot of logs, just going back and forth with different loader applications and functions. 
it's just really hard to beat. So really this has the same type of versatility as a 1025R we talked about earlier. Well, with the exception of mowing your lawn, you're really not gonna mow your lawn with this tractor too often. It's pretty darn big for that, but a good example would be mowing this field, right? So we did some mowing with several different machines and on a 1025R, you could run a 48 inch, a four foot brush hog, but we're running a 10 foot brush hog. We could run a, a 12 or a 15 foot if we wanted to on this tractor. So you can see how having a lot bigger tractor can help you be a lot more efficient if you have a large acreage application. And this isn't every tractor series that's out there. There's a big jump from a one series to a four series. You have the two and the three series in the middle and you could fall well within that range too, just depending on the size of the land that you have or the size of the projects or the size of attachments or the budget or whatever it is. But we're just talking about the machines that I have out here at the property right now. And so I have used this tractor a decent amount out here so far, and I would have used it more if it wasn't for the whole overheating experience I had this summer. But we've done some field mowing with it. We've done some driveway maintenance. Actually, we used the tiller to help put the driveway in as well. Did some landscape raking over on the other side of the property too. And we originally got a four series tractor to use back at the shop just to help offload and load up trucks and pallets and move things around. It's a very capable machine, it's very stable. We added some wheel spacers on to make it a little bit wider. Probably didn't really need to so much. Out here it's a little hilly so it does come in handy, but these are naturally a pretty stable machine. All right, well this is the latest addition to my fleet here, which is a Kubota M4D-071. This is a utility tractor, all right? So we're stepping out of the compact world, stepping up into the utility world. You can see it's a bigger footprint, bigger tires, heavier, still has a front end loader on it, still has a three point hitch, still has a cab. You're not gonna mow your lawn with this, but one of the main reasons that I got this tractor was for that kind of just point it in one direction and go type of work. So if you are brush hogging a big field, or if you are grading your long driveway, or if you're plowing a field, you know, if you're just doing something where you just kind of set it and forget it, this is a great machine for it. You know, I'm actually gonna be setting this up with a big old snow pusher on it to plow the driveway. So same kind of application, right? It's not the loader work where you're digging into a pile and going back and forwards all the time or trying to grade and smooth things out with your bucket. I did not get this tractor to do that kind of work. But it really got me thinking about a bigger gear drive tractor when we had some overheating issues when we were brush hogging this summer. You know, it was 90 degrees plus out all summer long and the hydro machines will run a little warmer. And as we found out, they will overheat. And then if you're in a pandemic, it's gonna take you six or eight weeks to get your tractor back up and running. I just don't wanna deal with that nonsense anymore. So yeah, I used to have a 5115M, which is a 115 horsepower five series tractor. I bought that because I got a great deal on it and I thought I'm gonna use that someday at a new property I get. Out here though, I don't have enough open acreage to really justify a tractor that big. It's a whole new set of attachments where this is a 73 horsepower tractor. So it's just a few horsepower bigger than the four series tractor. So I can use a lot of those similar size attachments that I already sell and carry, but I can use this for certain applications. It can run a lot cooler. It's gonna be efficient when I'm just mowing a field. I'm not changing direction, having to switch gears and monkey around with all that. So since I don't have to choose one piece of equipment, I bought this to tackle a certain set of needs, a certain set of projects, and to make videos for you guys. You know, and I think it's worth noting as well that you are actually gonna get a little bit more stable with this tractor. Again, it's a wider footprint. Your center of gravity really isn't going up much higher. So it's about seven foot wide compared to about six foot wide on the four series. So you're just gonna notice on those smaller tractors like the one series, all the way up to the two, three, four, five, six series, whatever it is, you're naturally gonna feel a little bit more safe and secure the larger you go. All right, and last but not least is gonna be the mini excavator. And man, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of uh, folks using these things and they are just amazing for a lot of different projects, which I'm gonna to get to out here. I haven't really used it a whole lot just yet, but again, it's, man, it's tough to find equipment right now. So if you're browsing around and you find what you think is a good deal, you better just jump on it. And that's what I did because I know I have a lot of needs coming up for this. So we have 4,000 foot of pond frontage, you know, with some really steep, banks there and angles and a lot of areas that it's going to be unsafe and unstable to take other equipment just to get the the fallen branches and logs and, and trees that have that accumulated there so just to get everything cleared out clean that edge up a bit we have a driveway to put over on the other side of the property about another eight or nine hundred foot drive 
Got to get a nice connecting road from this side to the other side as well. So a lot of stumps to remove, some, some hills to cut into the sides and really grade them out. You know, culverts to put in. There's a lot of different applications you can use a Mini X4. But think about this. You know, this is, this is one tool. This is a backhoe, essentially, that you can put on the back of a tractor. You know, any of those tractors we talked about, of course, different sizes and going to be less capable. You know, you can get a backhoe actually for the front or an excavator for the front of a skid steer if you wanted to. But this is a dedicated excavator, right? That's all this is going to do. Yes, you can put um, like a mulcher head on here if you wanted to do some forestry mulching with it. You can get a few other attachments to kind of build them out and open up the versatility. But it's going to be the most limited as far as the spectrum of work that can be done, at least in my opinion. However, I know there's some Mini X lovers out there, so you're waiting to prove me wrong. Tell me all the things I can use this Mini X for. I want to know all the projects I can do with it. Okay, so now it's time to tell you, if I could only pick one, which machine would I choose? Now I am curious to know which one you think I should keep, but the one that I would keep if I could only keep one would be the 4720. And ironically enough, this is actually the machine that I'm gonna be selling. And really the reason for that is it's gonna be the biggest compact tractor I can get. So it's hydrostatic, which is just the ease of operation and efficiency for me. You know, I can have plenty of lift capacity with the front end loader for logging, for grapple work, for three point lift capacity as well, run large attachments with the PTO, tackle everything I need to in the comfort of a cab with heat and air conditioning. For a property this size, 140 acres, even if you had just 40 acres, I think that this is the tractor to get at least a four series. It doesn't have to be the 4720 or the 4066, but this general size of a tractor is very capable. So, but this gets you out of the bigger utility tractors and the gear drive, something that's a little bit more compact, says the name, right? Uh, but you can get a Kubota L6060 or another Grand L just for a similar comparison in the Kubota world. But since I'm not keeping just one machine, this is the one that's gonna go. Alrighty, well, that's gonna wrap it up. You know, I am curious what you guys have to say about all this. And believe it or not, what you say helps a lot of other folks out. A lot of folks read these comments down below. So do everybody a favor. If you have something helpful, pitch in and leave a comment. But I do wanna thank you for taking the time to stop by today. If you did enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your machine, tractor or a skid steer, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.